Republicans. But um, you see what's happening to President Trump right now. Uh, he can't get out and campaign like he wants to. It looks like a concerted effort uh, from the left and the right, the higher up that they are. And uh, I mean, honestly, some of us aren't worried about Iowa. Some of us are worried about Iowa, but he should be in Iowa right now. And they got him in a court. What do you think about that? Well, look, it's all interconnected. And, and my background is, of course, in Chinese Communist Party infiltration. And unfortunately, those tactics are not just contained to China. We're seeing them play out here in the United States. But I want to get very specific with that critique, because I think you hear a lot of times, oh, you know, the United States is descending into authoritarian uh, lawfare and chaos and totalitarian control. But there really is the evidence to support that. So with the, in the context of the Chinese Communist Party, uh, one of the primary documents that sort of guides their military strategy is something called the Three Warfares Doctrine. And it sort of breaks down into three silos. You have media warfare, psychological warfare, and legal warfare or lawfare. And that's exactly what you're seeing play out against the American people. And of course, Donald Trump, who I would argue is our greatest defender, if you look at the political system, not Republicans versus Democrats, but the uniparty versus everyone else. So I really think you're seeing the American ruling class adopt a lot of these Chinese style tactics to really wage war. Again, in sort of this 21st century way, it's not necessarily kinetic boots on the ground, but it's information warfare, it's subversion, it's infiltration, not invasion. And specifically in the realm of lawfare, I think what they're doing to President Trump is a perfect example of how these tactics are playing out in real time. But even if, I mean, you, you go back and you look at all the COVID mandate stuff, I think vaccine mandates, mask mandates, even the prosecutions of January 6 defendants, the way that they've done them case by case as opposed to one single event so they can inflate this narrative that, oh, you know, America is being... Uh, you know, taken over by, you know, hate crimes and, and far right, you know, domestic terrorists, that really is the lawfare angle. So a lot of my analysis, though, in the war, and we, of course, focus on what's going on here domestically, we are very America first, as you guys are, too. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there's really, it's fair to make the case that our elites here in the United States haven't just been captured by a lot of the Chinese Communist Party elites. Of course, they have foreign influence operations, but they're sort of a merger. And honestly, I think the Biden regime, and we call it a regime because they're not an administration, but frankly, I think they're envious um, of the Chinese Communist Party, the authoritarian tactics, right, the bandwidth that they have to suppress and repress their people. And I think they're sort of trying to do that um, to us now. I think you're right. And, and it, you can look at their own words. You look at Anita Dunn, you know, she worships Mao Zedong, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, just to add a little credence to your widespread spectrum, uh, uh -huh. something you broke the other day, uh, Burisma, the Ukraine gas giant that paid Hunter Biden millions, just lawyered up. Uh, the company and its founder retained a white shoe law firm, Cravath, according to the Foreign Agent Registration Act database. They're clearly terrified of an impeachment inquiry. Okay. Yeah, this is a this is a crazy story. So I always joke, I'm like the only American who frequents the FARA database, the Foreign <laughs> Agent Registration Act. I'm like the only non-bot who's on that website. Um, but I love it. I'm on it every day because you can find a bunch of stories that the mainstream media ignores. And this is a perfect example of one of them. Uh, so brief summary, Farah, if you're working on behalf of a foreign company, a foreign individual, a foreign country, you have to register. It's housed at the DOJ so people can see that your whether the talking points you're putting out or the work you're doing is on behalf of a foreign agent of foreign interest. Now, there's only about 200 or so active registrations for, for example, China. And we know there are a lot more <laughs> than just 200 people who are working on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party here in the United States. Yeah. For example, Hunter yeah. Biden never registered for anything that he was doing. Um, but in the context of a, of a looming impeachment inquiry, the story is really important. So this top you know, criminal defense firm um, retroactively registered with FARA. So this was for work that they were doing in 2016. So now eight years down the road, they are retroactively registering with FARA for the actions that they conducted on behalf of Burisma, which is, of course, the Ukrainian uh, oil and gas giant that was paying Hunter Biden upwards at $80,000 a month. But what's really interesting, and I think, right, I know, 
But now you now you know why they hired Kravath because Hunter Biden wasn't doing if Hunter Biden was their other hire, he wasn't doing anything for them. Um, but what's really important here, and I think the buried lead from the story, besides, of course, it's obvious that they're freaking out about a potential impeachment inquiry is one. This law firm was doing the same exact type of activities that Hunter Biden was doing. So everyone has always said that Hunter Biden violated FARA. And I think it's a pretty clear case as someone who's broken a lot of stories from Hunter Biden's hard drive. You don't really even need to go that far to see that he obviously violated FARA. Um, but this is sort of, I think, case closed, final nail in the coffin on that front. But what's also really interesting is that contained in the filings, it showed who they were meeting with. Uh, within the then Obama White House. Um, they had meetings with Marie Ivanovich, who was one of the key anti-Trump impeachment witnesses. So all this stuff is interconnected. But what I think the more important part is of this Hunter Biden story, and something that honestly, I think Republicans, especially those in Congress, the investigations that they're doing right now, where they have really missed the messaging mark. And that is that Hunter Biden's business deals didn't occur in a vacuum, right? There are lasting ramifications that we are seeing play out now, not just here in the United States, but on the world stage, whether it's what's going on in Ukraine, whether it's what's going on at our southern border, whether it's what's going on with how this regime confronts or frankly lack thereof, the Chinese Communist Party. And of the four people that they listed who they were meeting with, uh, Burisma, two of them are now working at very high level roles within the Biden regime, particularly <laughs> on desks that have to do with energy, climate change, you know, oh, global geez. trade, all of that. So. It's very interesting, I think, when you look at the the paradigm of Hunter Biden's business deals kind of juxtaposed with how you see the Biden regime versus the Trump administration tackling, whether it be China, uh, Ukraine, all this that happened after. Uh, but there really are some lasting ramifications. And remember, CEFC China Energy, a lot of these Chinese foreign influence groups that Hunter Biden was profiting off of, it was the Trump administration that actually was sanctioning them and carrying out through his DOJ the lawsuits and the criminal indictments um, of entities like CEFC China Energy